Morocco is a country where water is precious and where drought has been an increasingly common phenomenon for the last 20 years. Demand for water will soon outstrip its availability. The reserves actuellement qui sont stockées, ils permettent un peu de subvenir aux besoins. Sauf que le Maroc, on est un essor depuis des années énorme. The country is already suffering from a lack of water and is expected to face a drastic situation by 2020. The Cebu Basin in northwest Morocco accounts for the greatest industrial production in the country, including leather, sugar, olive oil, and major agricultural crops such as wheat, beets, rice, and vineyards. So, the Basin du Cebu is one of the most important du Maroc. It occupies 6% of the national territory, with a population of almost 6 million inhabitants. It's practically 30% of the richness national or not. Agricultural development must meet the challenging requirements not only of water quantity but also water quality. For the quality of the water in the basin, we know very well that it's very degraded, whether it's superficial or subterranean. It's more than 50% of the pollution that is generated by the pollution domestic. And the rest, of course, is the pollution industrial. 70% of these pollution comes from the sucrery, the tannery and the oilery. Inappropriate management of water in the Cebu Basin is a threat to biodiversity in the area, in particular in the Merged Zerga Lagoon, one of the country's richest wetlands. L'agriculture est plus particulièrement parmi les activités les plus menaçantes de la lagune de Marjazaga. Elle est dans, elle s'est située près de la zone du Rab, qui connaît une intensification de l'agriculture, notamment des cultures industrielles qui utilisent beaucoup de pesticides et d'intrants chimiques. Les, les rizières ont un impact euh, très direct, si vous voulez, un peu sur euh, l'écosystème local de la, de la zone humide. Ce qui est dommage dans cette histoire, c'est que euh, les eaux d'irrigation euh, des rizières sont vidangées directement via le canal de Nador vers, euh, le, vers, la, vers la lagune de Marjazaga. Researchers have found high levels of heavy metals and fertilizers in the Nador Channel the main source of Merged Zerga's incoming fresh water. Everything is linked. If you lose wetlands, you will lose the services of those wetlands. For example, the recharge of uh, water tables, the purification of water, the uh, control of flooding. So if you're going to lose that, you're going to lose also opportunities for development. For example, agriculture, for example, tourism. WWF in Morocco is implementing pilot projects in the field to show concrete examples on how to use rationally water, in particular in the field of agriculture. Situated in the Cebu Basin, the Garb region is one of the major areas of agricultural development in Morocco. WWF and the Garb Regional Office for Agriculture, OMVAG, have collaborated on improving the control and management of water in the area with a project on rice growing. This is the traditional field which requires almost like a, to produce one kilogram, something like 3,000 litres of water. So that is at stake. If you are able to produce more rice with less water and we will be saving a lot of water and with each lot of ecosystem we will benefit. 
Five rice farmers have volunteered to experiment with intensive rice farming using SRI, the system for rice intensification, a technique which is already being successfully used in around 40 countries. Pour être franc, dès le départ, quand je me suis documenté sur la l'opération, je ne croyais pas tellement. Bon, après le, le voyage d'études qu'on a effectué en Inde, quand j'ai vu un peu les résultats, quand j'ai vu la dose de semences, on emploie ici au Maroc 200 kg, alors que là-bas 5 kg, avec le prix de la semence, l'économie d'eau, je commence à y croire. C'est pour ça qu'en discutant avec les responsables de la WWF, on dit pourquoi pas qu'ils viennent ici et qu'on entreprenne ensemble des essais chez les agriculteurs pour voir ce que ça donne. WWF is also working in Morocco at policy level. The European Union is investing a big amount of money in the relationship between Morocco and the European Union. And what we are pushing for is that the services provided by ecosystems are recognized, are protected, and are well integrated in the so-called European neighborhood policy. And this is for the sustainable development of Morocco. The relationship between the EU and neighbouring non-EU countries is regulated by the European Neighbourhood Policy, the ENP. WWF and partner NGOs have created an advocacy group to influence the ENP for the long-lasting protection of natural resources in Morocco. Cebu and its tributaries supply one of the most highly populated and productive areas in Morocco. Without the cooperation of local and national authorities, farmers, local people and the European Union, an immense heritage could soon disappear. Mm -hmm.